The X-Men in the MCU. How will it happen? Hey, it's me, AP, and welcome to the Saturday Movie Show, everyone. I hope you're all having a lovely Saturday today. So today's episode is a dedicated episode to the topic of, of the X-Men and how they will be joining the MCU over maybe the, the coming days, the coming months, the coming years. Who knows? But we are going to discuss the topic today and I'm going to delve into a few different topics related to this or subtopics in regards to all this. I just want to also add before going into this episode, there are going to be spoilers ahead for oh, for WandaVision, the TV show WandaVision. There's going to be some spoilers that have been that have happened on recent episodes of WandaVision. So before I really delve into what's going on um, with today's show and what we're talking about, I just want to just say spoiler warnings ahead, potentially. Uh, well, there are going to be spoilers. I'm just going to say it now. So there's going to be spoilers. So if, you, if you're not up to date with WandaVision, uh, episode five being the last episode I've, I've recently watched, uh, throughout all those episodes, I'm going to be discussing all them episodes included in within this topic of X-Men. And as I said, there's going to be stuff in there that maybe you don't want to hear if you've not watched it so far. So let's give a spoiler countdown of five, four, three, two, one. So again, spoilers ahead for the episode ahead. So first of all, I want to talk, talk about this topic. How will the X-Men join the MCU? How will it happen? We now know that Fox is owned by Disney, so it is going to happen at some point very soon, hopefully. And Kevin Feige, the uh, the mastermind behind Marvel, Disney, everything that has been good from Marvel over the past few years, uh, the Marvel master, ma mastermind behind Marvel Studios, came out with this quote in 2019. I was reading this this morning, and it is, it's interesting because it says, Kevin Feige said, this is the quote, it will in regards to X-Men joining the MCU, he said, it will be a long time. Right, so, first off, when I hear anything, any type of quotes from anyone in show business of any form, when I hear something like this, it will be a long time, I always take it with a, with a pinch of salt because we just don't know. We don't know whether they're just, he's just saying that and things are going on behind the scenes and... I think I think when he says it's a long time, I don't think it's like ten years in the future of the the X Men joining the MCU. I I think realistically now we are looking at the next maybe three to four years. I think that until when I talk about the X Men, I mean like a fully fledged X Men in the MCU, an X Men movie or a X Men TV show of some sort. I think it will be within the next three to four years. Long time sounds like 10 years, 10 or 15 years, and I don't think it is anything like that. I think it is looking at like three to four years. Obviously, everything is dependent on the the way stuff is released nowadays, and I, obviously with the current pandemics across the world, it may delay stuff. Uh, I'm sure it's inevitable things are going to be delayed along the along the way. But I, I cannot see it being any more than four years away. I really think they will want to get the X-Men in the MCU as soon as they can, because I think it is going to be a huge, huge boost for the MCU, and not that it needs boosting, but I think it's just a, it's just a, a massive, another huge positive for this great storytelling fran franchise with within Marvel. I, I, I'm, I'm a big Marvel fan, and what, the day I heard that Fox had been purchased by Disney, I was really happy because. It's one of those where we finally see get to see, first of all, the X-Men join in with the Avengers, which is super cool. And another thing, another property I'm excited for is the Fantastic Four. I don't think we've ever really had a good version of the Fantastic Four. And I wouldn't say it's a it's a set of characters that I'm like absorbed in. I'm not like completely fascinated by that set of characters fantastic four but what i'm also what i'm interested in is the idea of seeing a marvel studios version of the fantastic four in the mcu because i feel like most things that 
Kevin Feige's got his hands on within the MCU. Um, anything that the MCU has put out, apart from Iron Man 3, has been pretty good. So I'm hoping that with with that purchase that Disney made, it's going to bring on two more great properties. And, and I'm sure I'm missing out loads of other characters that can be involved, which were owned by Fox as well, that will be rebooted eventually or mixed in somehow with within the new within the MCU. So as I said, how long he says it's going to be a long time. I personally think it's just going to be within the next three or four years. That is my verdict of saying this in 2021, early 2021 now, February 2021. I think within the next three to four years we will have a fully fledged X-Men team team in the MCU. I, I really do think that is going to happen. So as I said, this is going to be a whole episode dedicated to this this massive topic. I think it's a massive topic. I I, I, I love talking about movies. You know what I do. You know I love, love talking about movies. So let's move on with an, another question within our list. What version of the X-Men would I like to see in the MCU? Because this this topic now is going to delve into another side question of this and this relates to WandaVision so in episode 5 of WandaVision we see in the end moments of that episode Quicksilver arrives within one of the sitcoms it's like the 80s 90s sitcom and she is the brother he is the brother let me correct myself he is the brother of Wanda, WandaVision uh, he is the <laughs> He is the the brother of Wanda, but it is not the Quicksilver that we know from the MCU. It is even Peter's is version of Quicksilver, which was introduced in X Men: Days of Future Past, the from the X Men franchise, which is very interesting because we now have had a property, a, a character, an actor come over from the X Men franchise, the first. X-Men character. Now we don't really know yet. Maybe it could be he could be playing another person within that has been brought into this world who is a completely original character and they could be just forgetting everything to do with his past as Quicksilver. But surely that is it is just way too much of a coincidence and fans are now on board with this whole multiverse idea. So it would be silly just to recast even Peter's in this role and then have no mention of his past within the Fox franchise of movies when he played Quicksilver. So now that they've she she said, yeah, this is my brother, this is my brother. She knowingly knows, thinks that he is she well, he is her version of her brother who died, which is really weird. But I've seen this on online, I've been reading through comments online, and I was thinking this to myself as well. It's like, what if her powers somehow dragged him from the multiverse and he is the Quicksilver from the Fox universe of X-Men movies? And I'm just like, whoa, whoa, that is cool. And I, again, I was thinking of this and then I was reading loads of stuff online and thinking, obviously a lot of people have been thinking a very similar uh, idea and I've, I've heard this in other videos and, as well. And it's, again, I think it's a, a really cool interesting concept and uh, this relates to another idea but first of all if that that is the case and this is this really is the first step of bringing in the x-men into the mcu this could be the avenue the road where they start to bring those characters into it through wonder vision now in the comic books wonder and quicksilver pietro pietro that is the character, her brother, they are the children of Magneto. And we all know who Magneto is. Magneto from the X-Men universe. But in the MCU, Wanda and Pietro, it, the origin story is that they have Sokovian parents who were killed in Sokovia. So, what happens? Is it a case where they were... the the original parents weren't actually their parents and they were maybe adopted early on and so Sokovian parents took them on board and Magneto is the real father 
Or is it a case where there's a load of magic going on here and Magneto from the the Fox movies comes over and then we see somehow some sort of magic and then they he gets recast as their parents. Like she says, like like I said, in the MCU, her brother is dead, but then a brother arrives in this sitcom world. But so if her parents are dead in the MCU version, who's to say her parents don't arrive and then her Sokovian parents are or her Sokovian father is Magneto? It's hard to say, or, or would it just be the case, as I said, where it was it turns out it was a lie and she was she was adopted by Sokovian parents. It's it's an interesting one. I think it will be the way I would play it is this, right? So we've had Pietro arrive now in One Division, and it's even Peter's the Fox version. What I would love to see is because he is from like these these newer versions, the modern versions of the X-Men movies. Then we have like the original trilogy of X Men movies with uh, Patrick Stewart, Hugh Jackman, and Ian McKellen. Sorry, McKellen, who played Magneto. What I'd really like to see is Ian McKellen arrive in this show, and they do some sort of like plot where it's like a long lost family sort of idea, and then it's like turns out in the show they play it in the show that Magneto is actually the father, and there's some sort of mix up along the way along birth, but the they throw it into the sitcom, but then it is brought into the real world somehow. And then Magneto then breaks like the the fourth wall and speaks to Wanda and Pietro and sort of enlightens them on what's going on. And I mean, I mean, this is going full meta now. It's full meta. This this idea, this like a world within a world, and then. A, ca- a character, a two different characters playing the roles. It, it's really weird, but I, I really like the concepts. But I do think I would play it with just having, I'd have a Suri McKellen come in. I like Michael Michael Fassbender. I think he's a really cool version of Magneto. But for me, Magneto is Sir Ian McKellen. Um, as I said, F- F- Fassbender was good and, and I'd love to see more of him in the MCU. Definitely, I'd love to see his version at some point turn up. But it would be Ian McKellen. But that's the good thing about this now. We have this opportunity now with this whole multiverse idea where characters can just turn up from any universe, basically. And if even if you recast a character, a few years later, you could just have them turn up as this idea of the multiverse, which is really cool. And it's a cool storytelling opportunity for, for writers at the at Marvel Studios. And it's, it's cool to have, like, like these ex characters, these ex people who have played roles return, and we're seeing it. We're hearing the rumors now with the Spider Man Three movie that we're going to get Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire and a whole bunch of the old villains from across all of the Spider Man franchises, all three of the Spider Man franchises, which is awesome. But why not? Why? I think that's what's going to happen here. I think it is going to, like I said, I think the stepping stone is one division and i think this is the stepping stone to where we go with mutants so as i said x-men what version of x-men would i like to see i would like to see personally a blend of both i think there's an opportunity to get the best of both worlds here i think you could have like eat surrey mckellen's like magneto and then you could have i, th- I think with Sir ian mckellen you've you've got a patrick stewart i think he's the the best choice for Professor X. I'd I'd really like to see Hugh Jackman return as Wolverine. I know for me Logan was ace, and I, it was the perfect ending. But I still think he's got a load to offer as that as that character of Wolverine. And I think I don't think it would like tarnish what has happened with them trilogy. The Wolverine was great, and Logan were great, both great movies. It was a great send off. But I don't think having him c- come back into the MCU as Wolverine would tarnish his reputation as that character. I think, if anything, it would just expand upon the the huge legacy he built there within that within that role. So I'd really like to see Hugh Jackman. Then I'd like to see some of the modern cast come. Because I thought the original, the, um, the last set of X-Men movies were okay. I think the last one was a pretty bad movie. Yeah, that wasn't great. But the characters they brought in, was it Ty Sheridan? Um... Sansa thingy, what's her face? I can't remember. I don't know what the actress's name. The 
she went on to play Jean Grey in it as she was out of Game of Thrones. I, I think those two characters were great. I, I think, like, if they have them, if they have Kelsey Grammer return, maybe, as Beast, uh, that would be good. I think, like I said, I think there's a cool opportunity now where they can blend both worlds in having maybe some of them come over as the X-Men team. And maybe, maybe you recast a few of the roles. But really, why not just keep some of these cool actors that are involved in the franchises before who want to be involved again? Keep them in the roles. People know them. And I, I think it will be, as fans to say, well, this is all all together now. So the X-Men's all, all the X-Men movies are all linked to the MCU. That is cool. That is a cool idea. And I, I really like that idea. So as I said, I'd have Hugh Jackman. I'd have Ty Sheridan and um, second Jean Grey actress. I would have Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen. They would be my choices for the X-Men coming over at this point in time. If they want to recast some roles, fair enough, but they would be my choices for a new X- X-Men team moving forward. Michael Facebender and James McAvoy, I thought they were both cool in the characters, but I think it would benefit having like the older characters involved because it connects to all the franchises and maybe you could just do it with Hugh Jackman, fair enough. But I, I really liked Ian McKellen and Sir Patrick Stewart, uh, Sir Ian McKellen as well, both of them characters. I, I, I enjoyed them both in them roles and I would really like to see them interact with characters within the MCU. So as I said, now we've got Evan Peters now in the MCU and we, we don't know, again, it's still mystery around his character in WandaVision. But... A big part of one of the comics, I've never read this comic before, but I've, I've read up on it and I'm aware of the sort of the idea of this comic. And it is House of M. And I believe a lot of like WandaVision was also inspired by this. And basically within this comic, again, again, this is only what I've read online. I've never read the comic, so I'm not going to pretend that I've read it. House of M, the final moment of that comic book is Scarlet Witch, Wanda. And she she says, no more mutants. And basically, this rids the world of mutants. All mutants. Some mutants disappear. Some mutants lose all their powers completely. And the, the idea of this now is how... We talk about how, in this video, how should the X-Men join the MCU? I think this is more like... This one is like, how how will it happen? And this... Again, I've seen this theory online. I've This is the theory I've seen online. It's not a theory of my own. This is something I want to discuss, though. Instead of her saying, no more mutants, what if somehow she says more mutants and she uses her magic to, to create mutants within the MCU? Now, th- this could go to one of two ways. She could be like create, create the mutant gene and people just suddenly start getting mutant powers. Or it could, this could be where the multiverse is really ripped apart and ripped open. Because we know she is going to be a part of the next uh, Doctor Strange film, The Multiverse of Madness. She is going to feature in that movie. It has been confirmed that she is a member of that cast. And they've sort of said that WandaVision is like the lead into that movie. So what if her saying more mutants or something along those lines just tears apart the multiverse? And this is where we get... Andrew Garfield, Tommy Maguire going into Spider-Man 3 with Tom Holland. This is where we see the multiverse of madness, where the world is just just falling apart because each and every multiverse is just like sliding into each other and turning into each other. And basically, we might see the case where multiverses, certain universes, combine into one. And then we see an X-Men team, the X-Men, the mutants from, say, the Fox universe, melding in to the MCU. And this is how we get the mutants within the MCU. And I think it's a really, really cool theory. And I think it would work well. I think it's a good idea. It's a spin on that. Obviously, that is a a famous line. I've seen that that page where she says, no more mutants. What? That's the spin on it. The spin on it is instead of saying no more mutants, she creates mutants with the MC- within the MCU. Sure, M- mutants may just exist in the MCU already, and we just are not aware of them. They've not been shown. Maybe they're in hiding. Maybe they've chosen to stay out of the spotlight. 
that's fine. That's fine. That's that's fair enough. But I don't think that would be the case. I think if we were having like the Battle of New York, and when when Loki's attacking, I don't think the we I don't think Professor X and the X Men would just stay clear of all that was happening. I think they would be saying to themselves, "We've got to get ourselves involved. We got to help the Avengers." And I think the reason why the X Men didn't turn up, storytelling wise, is because they weren't in that world. They don't exist. And now, Wanda could create them. And I think this could be the finale of of WandaVision, where she creates that, and then it leads into what the storyline is going to be within Dot Strange 2, the multiverse of madness. I think it's a good idea. I think it's a cool concept, and I'm I'm really down with it. I don't think... I don't think it, there's a better idea out there. I think just that, that idea of having universes combined, and then it just completes utter terror as well. People maybe start vanishing. Maybe it's kind of like a, a like a, another snap in a way. It's like another like final snap where because worlds are combining, people are losing loved ones. So it's it's another massive worldly traumatic event. But it's also event an event that creates the X Men within the MCU, and I'm down with it. I'm most definitely down with that idea of uh, of how the X-Men could come to the MCU. And I think it's a cool concept. Whoever's whoever's original, I don't know who, whoever originally thought of that, because again, I've seen it so many times on the internet over the past couple of days. Whoever's originally thought of that is a, is a really smart person. I think it's a really cool spin on what that, that line is. Uh, excuse me one moment, folks. I'm just going to get a drink. Why my nose as well. The continuous drip continues. On the coffee, guys. Black coffee as always. I'm rocking it. So. We now touched upon the idea of what my favourite teams are. What, and we've also touched upon the idea of how how they will how they will come into the MCU potentially. Now now what I want to talk about is the X-Men in the MCU. What well first of all, do we want to see a bunch of more solo movies? So do we want to see if we see this new X-Men in the MCU? Do we want to see like a Cyclops? Do we want to see Wolverine? Do we want to see these as independent properties? like a Wolverine TV show, a Wolverine movie, a Jean Grey TV show, a Jean Grey movie, a Professor X TV show, Magneto movie. Do we want to see those? Or do we want to see a full-on team, team up, just the X-Men? I I want to see just the X-Men. For now, anyway. If they're bringing in the, the X-Men to the MCU, I don't want to see... First, fair enough, we see the introduction of the X-Men and then we see the X-Men and someone else or Wolverine on his own again. I want to see just the X-Men on their own as a team up. I don't want to see the team just having their own adventures as well. I want to see every character within the X-Men universe all featured in an X-Men movie and then they don't feature in anything else. Fair enough, like little cameos maybe, but really I just want to see... X-Men movies. I don't, I don't want to see any more origin movies or anything like that. It's got to be just, just full-on X-Men. And I would also like to see the X-Men be played out as a TV show. I really would. I think now we have seen the X-Men movies. We've seen... It feels like if we do if we do movies again, I feel like they're just going to really just rehash a lot of what has come previously. And I think that was what was the problems was with the last three movies. Again, I didn't mind them. The, the last one was awful. I, I thought the last, the last X, X-Men movie was really bad. Because it was just like that Dark Phoenix storyline. Again, we'd seen it all before. It wasn't as good anyway as X-Men 3. X-Men 3 wasn't a good movie, in my opinion, either. But we've seen the movies play out again and again and again. And we've seen some of the big X-Men storylines now really being told. And sure, there is other X-Men storylines. I'm not saying there isn't. But I think TV now is a better medium. It is a better way 
to tell stories now, especially with what what Marvel is putting out now on Disney Plus with Disney. Disney have have got it nailed. With One Division, they proved that. With The Mandalorian, they proved that. They proved that TV shows now are. I mean, we t- we talked about TV shows for years being up there as big as like when we've had like Breaking Bad, we've had Lost. Saying that these big budget shows, Game of Thrones, are just like watching movies, and that's true. But I feel like now they're even going into it, even they're going into like this new level with with like the what they're showing with Mandalorian because they're showing that they can make these these huge big budget TV shows that look like movies, and they can do them on in these small studios on relatively. I imagine they're a lot lower produ- production cost in regards. to to what like normal movies are I, I, I mean they're building Disney are building these massive studios where they can create f- like real time sets digitally on these big screens LED screens and it's phenomenal but it goes to show they can make these shows now and they don't have to go to like big locations somewhere they don't have to fly out a whole crew they can do it all in a in a studio so that that cuts down costs. That most definitely cuts down costs. But I think, for me, the TV show side of things, again, I like a TV show style of storytelling. I, f- I like that idea of, like, we have the end and the finish, and it's just, like, this big tell loads of different stories throughout. And we've seen this with WandaVision. I wasn't fussed on the first few episodes of WandaVision, but now I'm intrigued. It's exciting. And I think they could really do that with X-Men. And I think X-Men would work really well as that. Everyone loved like the the X Men animated show throughout the nineties. Everyone really enjoyed that. Why not have a live action X Men TV show? I'm sure people would love to see that. I think it would be really cool. I think imagine the numbers for Disney Plus. Disney that would be the biggest thing. That would be bigger than Mandalorian and One Division combined. I, I, that is my opinion anyway. I think it would be that big. I think if people heard about the X Men TV show coming to what to Disney Plus. Imagine how many people would want to tune in and want, would want to subscribe to Disney+. Plus. So for me, I would really like to see after, maybe like I said, in within two years' time, we see X-Men come to the MCU. We've seen the introductions maybe through WandaVision, maybe a few cameos in some of the movies like Doctor Strange 2, and then we see them in this new world, in the MCU world, and we see a bunch of X-Men adventures in a TV format. I am sold on that. That is something that I want to see, and I hope it happens. I really, really do. It would be awesome. So, let's just get on to a bit of housekeeping, guys. We are going to leave that topic now. I feel like we've I finalised that topic. I feel like I've, I've told my, uh, my opinion on this topic now. I want to see the X-Men in the MCU. I want to see it happen ASAP, and I want to see a TV show version. But let's do a bit of housekeeping for today. So, housekeeping section is beginning. So, what have I been watching this week? I just want to talk about, first of all, actually, no, it's housekeeping. We'll do that as another section. Housekeeping this week. I just want to say thank you again to everyone who's been watching the videos, who's been supporting the channel. Uh, I've had a whole bunch of uh, more subscribers. My plan is now to... You know, the goal is we're hitting near like 300 su- subscriber mark now, which is awesome. It is fantastic. And I just want to keep on growing this community with you all. I think it's cool. I love hearing the comments from you all in the sections. What I wanted to really ask was, like, what sort of topics do you want to see in future episodes of the Saturday Movie Show? Do you prefer, like, these sort of, like, evergreen topics were, like this were, we're talking about the X-Men, how should it come to the MCU? Or do you want to see... If you want to see more weekly videos discussing movies of the week and what's going on in the world of movies, I want to involve you all in this community and I want to get you your all your ideas, your pictures in on this. Would you want to see a bit of both, really? That's what I've been doing recently, sort of like a bit of both, doing some where I'm discussing recent topics and some where I'm doing... Like last week we did the uh, Zack Snyder appreciation special, which was really cool. I really enjoyed that. It was fun and... I just want to know what do you prefer personally. Do you do you want to? I want to hear what, what your thoughts are. Let me know. Do you do you prefer a bit of both, or do you want to just see pure topics of what's going on in the news and movie news, or do you want to see topics 
that are like just an overall topic you can watch any year of the year. You don't have to watch instantly. It can be watched any time, really. It never gets old, the topic. So let me know. Let me know. But again, thank you very much. The I've got some cool videos coming up over the next few weeks. I've filmed a load of videos recently. I, I filmed like three or four video, like weeks worth of videos uh, now because because I'm doing the, the Saturday movie show as well, it can just become a bit too much if I'm filming one video for the Thursday videos and then the Saturday. So I prefer just doing like three or four videos in one shoot and then I can do my weekly Saturday show videos, which is cool. Um, but I'm again, I'm really enjoying it. I'm enjoying it and I, I feel like now we're getting up to that 300 mark. I'm thinking about like maybe like if we get up to 500, if we do some sort of super special episode, I don't know why it would involve yet, but uh, maybe that is something we'll have to start planning soon and sort some out, sort some out, and see what's going on. But that is housekeeping for today. I want to talk about what I've been watching recently and this this past week and really over the past couple of weeks, I've been watching Seinfeld, and I've never watched Seinfeld before. I know a lot of people say it's like one of the best. Best comedies ever in human history. I've never watched it. So I recently started watching it on over Christmas when I had Amazon Prime, like the free trial for the month. Started watching it then and then I stopped watching it for a bit. And I recently, this week, I downloaded the the all four here in the UK, all four app. It's Channel 4's streaming service. It's a free, you can get a free version or a pay version. I'm just using the free version for now. And I've been watching Seinfeld on it, and it's got all the seasons, which is awesome. It has like adverts in between, but I, I don't really mind it. I just watch it and I put it on. It doesn't really bother me personally. I know a lot of people don't like adverts, but I'm kind of like I have free the free version of Spotify I use and stuff, and I use the free. Obviously, YouTube's got adverts. I don't really care. I'm not really that bothered about adverts now. It's kind of just like I feel like I, I just get used to them, or just I just sort of like I tune them out of my brain, or. In YouTube's case, I do skip the adverts sometimes, most of the time. Uh, but I've been watching Seinfeld, and look, I feel like it's a, like a sl it's a slow grower, slow grower on me. And maybe it is again. It's a it's definitely a comedy of the time. It was what was it like late eighties, early nineties. So it's growing on me. It's there's a few jokes that I found funny, and it's just something I need to enjoy and maybe watch a bit more of. I'm definitely going to give it more of a watch. Uh, ones I really enjoy of that time really is Frasier. I'm a big fan of Frasier and I'm a big fan of Cheers as well. And I, I enjoy both of those. So it's not like I don't like old sitcoms because I do. And I mean, I mean Seinfeld as well. It, obviously in America, this is a big, a big thing in America. But here in the UK, I, I wouldn't say Seinfeld is a, like a big, a big sitcom because it's, it, I don't think it really sort of like, Crossed the pond as such. That's that's my view anyway. I I, I used to think it was called Sinfield. I, I I remember hearing of it years ago. I used to think it was called Sinfield, but now I know it's Jerry Seinfeld. That's his name. Um, funny funny fact. Funny fact of the other day. But yeah, I'm gonna give it time, and I I can see why people like it, and I, I can see it's obviously he's a very funny guy, and I've watched like interviews with Jerry Seinfeld, and I think he's he is quite a funny funny guy, and he's very intelligent as well. It's it's a great cast, so I'm gonna give it more of a watch. I'm definitely not giving it up, giving up on Seinfeld because there's some of there for me. I think there's something there, and again, I like I like stuff like Frasier and Cheers. I love I for me American American comedies win through over British comedies for me. I've always had that viewpoint. One of my favorite one of my favorite sitcoms is Thirty Rock. Tina Fey, Thirty Rock. I I really love that. No, I think it's a great... Before that, I used to watch, like, Two and a Half Men. And I used to think Two and a Half Men was the best thing since sliced bread. I used to really enjoy that. And, you know, I watch it back occasionally. Occasionally, Two and a Half Men. And I, I still I still enjoy it a bit. But I, I can watch 30 Rock back over and over again. And I, I really, really enjoy that. And even, like, The American Office. I, I really enjoyed the, the British version of The Office for years. And I remember someone... You know, I used to go to college with. He used to say, "Oh, you should watch the American Office," and we'd laugh him out because we were like, "Yeah, how can it how can it top the British Office?" And then, and then I started watching the American Office, and then I I, I really enjoyed it, and I was like gloating just as much as that guy who was originally. And uh, yeah, the American Office for me is is the better version now. I think it got it got worse 
by the end, when, when Steve Carell left, it went downhill a bit. It definitely went downhill for me. But still, I, I've again, the, uh, the Office I've watched back again, I've really enjoyed it. But 30 Rock is the one that is, from start to finish, it is phenomenal. I didn't like that recent little special they did for the NBC streamer service. I thought it was pretty bad. But forgetting that, the TV show was always... Uh, the best TV show, in my opinion, the best sitcom of all time. I really do, I really do like uh, 30 Rock. It's phenomenal. If you've never watched 30 Rock, give it a watch. It's well worth the watch. But anyway, folks, that is the end of the Saturday movie show for today. I'm going to, I'm going to start, well, it's only early yet. It's still an early day. It's an early Saturday as of, I mean, I mean, by the time this is edited and my slow, my computer is super, super slow. So this will be probably built by tomorrow so it'll probably be the sunday sunday movie show but uh it is super slow editing it but again thank you very much for watching the saturday movie show if you if you've enjoyed this video please do give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more movie related videos and let me know your your verdict on the topic how would you like to see the the x-men join the mcu how should it happen and how do you think it will happen let me know your thoughts and i'll see you next time